So my name is Kasha Bakil Zaidi. I'm a PGY3 third year internal medicine resident at Edmund Health Orlando. So I'm going to be presenting uh, this project that I worked on, a QI project that I worked on with uh, other of my some of my other colleagues and my mentor, Dr. Everett. So the project uh, was based off of my cardiology rotation, where I saw them titrating GDMT medications very rapidly, and you know, seeing them every two weeks or so to kind of up titrate their uh, goal-directed medical therapy for heart failure. So as we probably know, there are about 64 million people who are being impacted by heart failure and the number continues to rise. And it's a very common occurrence in the internal medicine team uh, that we encounter these patients in the hospital. They usually come in for heart failure exacerbations and then you know we kind of optimize them and we discharge them. Now, the idea was that uh, about there are joint guidelines by ACC, AHA, and all of them agree, and these were even updated in 2022 most recently, which came up with the idea that if we initiate them and optimize them on four groups of medications primarily, which basically include uh, your ACE or ARBs, or you can do ARNIs, which are angiotensin receptor, neprilisin inhibitors, or uh, along with a beta blocker, along with an SGLT2, which is sodium glucose co-transport inhibitor, and you will have your uh, mineral acorticoid receptor antagonist. So these four groups of people in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction have shown to improve mortality by about 70% and also morbidity. Now, morbidity in these patients um, basically includes recurrent hospitalizations. Every time they get hospitalized, they get pushed back. So, you know, in their it basically contributes to reducing their mortality. So the idea behind this project was to decrease the pressure on the cardiology team alone to be titrating these medications. And you know, more and more primary care people have been encouraged to up titrate these medications. However, I saw that in our clinic as well as you know other researches that I read over, it's not being optimally practiced. Now, the idea behind this project was to understand what are the barriers to that not happening. So basically what we did was uh, we got a list of 250 patients with heart failure who were enrolled in our clinic. And amongst those, we had about 82%, which are heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And amongst those, we basically did chart review extensively to identify which of those medications they were on and uh, what doses were they on as well. Exclusion criteria for our study included patients who had heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, even though most recent studies have shown that heart failure with preserved ejection fraction has also shown an imp improvement in morbidity and mortality, but that's still an area where, you know, there's a little bit of debate and, you know, ifs and buts, but heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is most definitively, you know, recommended to be on these medications. So a statistical analysis was performed to assess how many of our patients were already on those medications and then which doses they were on, respectively. And after that, we found a few gaps in the practices that we had. Um, so there were a few patients who weren't on the optimal medication. So you can see that we were basically what we tried to see after that was if they were on it, plus if they were op on optimal doses. So if they were not on it or they were not on an optimal dose, Individual interviews personalized were conducted with their PCPs to understand the limitations and the barriers to, you know, why they were not being optimized. So among th amongst those, we found out that about this figure, figure one here shows you the percentages of the patients who were optimizable without having any contraindications. So as you can see, the number is pretty high and mostly it's the SGLT2 and you can see on the figure that I have on the right here, figure two, which shows that SGLT2 were basically the most commonly prescribed. And they were also on max, like a lot of them were also on the optimal dose more compared to the others. Now, the reason for that was because Jardines comes in two doses. So it's like 10 and 25. So if they were started on 10, that's optimal dose. However, for the rest of them, they are started on a very low dose and then up titrated to their optimal doses. Now, the idea behind this that we were able to identify was there were patient factors. So, you know, patient don't, patients don't want to up-titrate their medications. The other thing was that it was too expensive and patients weren't able to afford it. There were also factors related to it just doesn't make me feel good. You know, patients have other side effects and other symptoms related to the medications as well. Then along with that, there are drug factors. So for example, side effects. If their GFR are less, is less than 30, we cannot optimize these medications and we cannot even initiate Jardians and... Um, the spironolactone. 
Then that being said, there's also other drug related factors like, you know, uh, if they have hyperkalemia, you can't give them those medications. So those are the things that we were basically monitoring for as well. Plus, like beta blockers can cause bradycardia, so you cannot uptitrate it in these patients. A lot of them um, combined all of these medications to some extent contribute to blood pressure drop as well. And it was observed that a lot of these patients, obviously, because they had HEFREF, um, they were commonly having a blood pressure, which was a little bit on the softer side. So it's harder to optimize these medications as well. But here you can see all of this orange uh, is that they were not on the optimal dose, which is where we are lacking. And we figured that, you know, as a primary care clinic, we were, we could do better in these areas. So that is what we started working on. So the intervention that we did for this was that we conducted personalized interviews to let them know that, okay, these, we understand these are the limitations, but then they're also, for example, you know, 28% of the people who can get optimized in the ASR, 45% of the people who are on Entresto and their doses can be increased. So similarly, we went through all those medications. Residents were provided um, education related to relating to that. And um, it was discussed with them. Now, one of the limitations that we have to this study and, you know, which we are currently working on and we hope to produce um, good results in the future is going to be that resident. It's a three year residency. So, you know, people recycle. So every year you will have one class graduating and one coming in. So, you know, the interns need ongoing education. So we actually have a session planned for them because they just started in July. So we will be doing a session next month to you know educate them regarding this. Then generalized education was also provided to the residents and in the in some of the factors it was also that they weren't aware and you know they're aware that they need to be on these four groups but they're not aware of what the optimal dose is to achieve maximal benefit and the benefit of the increase improvement in 70 to 60 to 70 percent mortality and morbidity comes from optimal dosing so that's basically the target and a lot of the times, you know, some of the limitations that we commonly see in PCP clinics is because it's a residency service, some of sometimes your patients are being seen by other residents, you know, you're not able to focus on their GDMT regimen, sometimes they're not able to come in that frequently every two weeks so that they can up titrate their medication. So those, so those are some of the barriers that we do still have that we're trying to, you know, work on with the fishbone to analyze what we can do better and how we can improve it. But currently we're focusing on the knowledge gap which we thought was one of the most prominent things because it's a training service. And uh, along with that, other literature that I reviewed, there were other articles as well that were uh, done in primary care clinics, and they also had suboptimal dosing. So the reason to present this is because we've noticed that there's suboptimal initiation as well as optimization of GDMT. And as it plays a big role in improving mortality and morbidity, it's an important issue that we need to talk about. Um, you know, to let PCPs know, to let internal medicine physicians know so that they're able to up titrate those and even initiate them while they're in the hospital and then have them follow up our patient with PCPs to optimize it as appropriate, of course. Mm -hmm.